Brian Manzella, director of the Brian Manzella Golf Academy at English Turn Golf and Country Club in New Orleans, Louisiana. As the 2012 Crown Plaza Invitational approaches, we are reminded of the brilliance of five-time champion Ben Hogan. Hogan won the event on his hometown Colonial Country Club, displaying such control over his ball that the course was nicknamed Hogan's Alley. I'm going to show you what I think the key move in Ben Hogan's swing is. Might even be his secret move. It's a move he shares some similarities with my student, David Toms, the defending champion of the Crown Plaza Invitational. This move is key to being able to compress the ball correctly and control the club face both to and through impact. I'm going to show you how you can feel it, maybe for the first time, and then how to incorporate it into your golf swing. The first thing you want to do is you want to take your left hand grip in your normal fashion and then check it against the club face holding the club parallel to the ground. Ben Hogan had a very neutral left hand grip. You can have a little bit stronger than neutral, but if it was neutral, the back of this left hand and the club face would match. Now what you do is set up to the ball with just your left hand on the club, and then while you're at address, close the club face by twisting the shaft till the face is about 45 degrees closed. Now, I know you're thinking, Brian, what am I gonna do with this 45 degree closed club face? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly what you're gonna do you're going to first slide your hips a little to the left, just a little. You're going to open your hips and you're going to allow that to open your chest a little bit. You're going to bend over your right side a little bit, adding some axis tilt. And when you look down, you're going to see a much squarer club face. If it's not exactly square, go ahead and square it up and then attach your right arm from the side. You're going to be experiencing the impact position that Ben Hogan was in in his famous book, Five Lessons, The Modern Fundamentals of Golf, and the same kind of impact position you see in all the swing sequences in golf magazine. Now, unless you add the twist, if you got in this impact position, you would hit horrible right to right shots. So since we know we need the twist to be in this professional impact position, when do we add it? Well, I'm going to show you a couple places that you might want to try. If you're a slicer, I believe that once you get to the top of the backswing, you should start applying this closing the club face twist right away. You're going to turn the club face so it starts looking at the ball. It's turning off the plane, the shaft swinging on, and that's going to let you just be able to hold that twist through impact and square the club face up, which is going to really help you completely eliminate your slice. But if you don't have any problem with slicing, you might try these two other ways. My student David Toms from the top of the swing with a pretty flat left wrist applies a little down arching all the way until the club is about parallel to the ground. That's about as twisted as his left wrist gets and then he pivots through holding that twist. But Ben Hogan did something very different than those two versions. From the top of the swing, when he already had just a little cup left wrist to start with, he actually applied some reverse twisting. That's right, the opposite of what we're gonna have to do down at the bottom for impact. So Hogan saved this closing twist until the shaft of the club got to parallel to the ground before impact, where his club face was what I call just slightly tipped over. A lot of people think perfectly orthodox that this last parallel is having the face straight up and down. Hogan had it a little more closed than that, and most good players, if you study golf swings, will have the face somewhat more closed than this. At this point in the swing, what Hogan was able to do is powerfully pivot through the ball, ever increasing the amount of arch in his left wrist, a movement that he called supination. And that supination allowed him to deal off the club while his body was unwinding and his left shoulder was getting further from the ball, controlling how much down he hit on it, which reduces the spin loft and gave him the vaunted Hogan sound, the where he hit it on the face, with maximum compression. I promise you that if you find the right place to put the twist in, whether it's really early on, gradually like David Toms, or save it for the very end like Ben Hogan, you'll hit more consistent, powerful shots, and they might nickname a golf course after you as well. Mm -hmm.